So, we've all been there. Pick up your guitar, get ready to start playing it. It's out of tune. And despite your best efforts, the guitar will not stay in tune. Now this is something that can affect all guitars, no matter their construction, their style, or how much they cost. So how do we go about fixing it and then preventing it? So to talk about this, I paid a visit to my friend Ben Calhoun down at my local shop, Righteous Guitars. He's set up more than a few guitars in his day, and uh, he knows a thing or two about how to fix common tuning issues. But before we jump in the car and head over to Righteous, a quick plug. This Saturday, November 21st, 2020, we have the next Backstage Live Show. This is a live stream concert series we've been doing here on this YouTube channel for the past six months. Me and my band have a really cool set planned out for this Saturday's show. So. 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on this YouTube channel. Be there, catch the show live. I think you're really gonna dig it. All right, with all that out of the way, let's head down to Righteous. Right now, is it close to two? Yeah, why you got that to do? No, I was just knew that there'd be some stuff coming on around here. All right. So why won't my guitar stay in tune, Ben? There's a few different reasons, Brett. <laughs> <laughs> First thing to find out is is it coming out of tune or is it playing out of tune like you tune it up with your tuner and then you play a chord and it sounds terrible um, or is it uh, you have it perfectly tuned up and you start playing and it's slipping those are two totally different type of issues uh, the first one is intonation and there's a couple things that can have an impact on your intonation so intonation we mentioned this earlier what is it it's the length of the string from the nut to the bridge saddle and the dead center of that string should be right here on your 12th fret. So when you play this note, it sounds the same, same as the open note. Or if I play this G, and I play this G, that it's in tune with one another. Uh, and really noticeable when you're in a band or if you're playing chords. So the way you adjust that is right here. And on a Strat style bridge, it's these screws back here. On a PRS style bridge, same thing, these screws back here. On a Les Paul style guitar, you can see it'll either have screws on that side or on this side. And then uh, Les Paul Jr., you know, possibly my favorite. That's right. It's just rock and roll. <laughs> it's close you enough. get what you get. Close enough. Yeah. You get a good note, a reference note, and then you play the octave of that re reference note. And you listen to whether it's too sharp or too flat. You're going to move this saddle to move your center. So that's pretty easy, right? If you're right here, for example, and the note is flat, right? then we want to shorten the string a little bit to move it that way. Does that make sense? What you want to make sure you do is A, small increments, and use a good tuner. Doing it by ear is not a thing for most people. You should also do it in playing position too, right? Everything should be done in playing position. Yeah, yeah. good point. So you'll go through each string and set it. I usually check from multiple angles, and everybody here at Righteous, we do that. We check several options across the fingerboard to make sure that each string is as close as we can get because honestly, this G and this G, this A and this A, this B and this B. They're probably not any of them going to be right on. So we want to find the midpoint where we're compromising to get the best mix so that you get the best experience playing your guitar. And you really can't do that, by the way, until your nut slots are adjusted, necks adjusted, uh, and then your actions adjusted, your final step before you kind of wrap up and set your pickup pipe as information. If you don't do it in that order, it's not going to work out real well. So something to get into before you get into intonation specifically is if you don't notice that it's going sharper or flat as you go up the uh, fingerboard. Let's say that you're playing your acoustic or your electric. It sounds great, but when you get down here, it starts sounding really out of tune. Probably your nut slots. If you look from the side, that's a decent cut nut. See the clearance, what we're looking for is the distance between that string and the fret, right? So if I hold that down, the string makes a straight line. See, it's got just a little clearance. How about that? If it's a lot more than that, that's too much. If your nut slots are too high, that's something that I probably would recommend you go see a, a luthier or a competent tech on, because if you go too far, you can't go back. <laughs> and people will do things like fill it with super glue and bone dust, and this is like a Band-Aid. It's not really a great fix. Now, the better thing to do is get it right the first time. But, it can't ever actually be truly intonated. Like 100%. If you can get over the fact that your chords, oh, it's in D. <laughs> if you can get over the fact that this chord 
Discord, 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 none of them sound perfect, but they're all close. That's really what we're trying to achieve, right? You're not gonna get them perfect. As a matter of fact, I think in some of the recordings you've heard where that G chord just sounds perfect, like, let me grab this acoustic and show you. It's pretty good. I can tune this guitar to be perfectly in tune with that G chord. When I go to A, you hear it? A little waver. That's fine. I mean, that's how a guitar is. So if you can accept that and get past it, it'll really help you enjoy the instrument. On an interesting note, if you have your action really high, right? Let's say that string is much higher. Think about this. Intonation is the length of the string, right? So if my string is really high and I push down, I'm going to make the string considerably longer when I push down to hit that fret. I'm going to stretch it, right? That's going to make your intonation not as good. So there is a reason to have your action set in an acceptable range and your neck set the correct way and your nut slot set the correct way. It'll help with your intonation and your playability and it'll make the guitar more enjoyable. Now, believe it or not, there's another big factor that plays into tuning issues on all guitars, and it's actually you and me. It's the player. Depending on how you play, the type of touch that you have with your fretting hand can be a huge factor in tuning issues. And this is something that was highlighted for me when I first started getting into the recording studio and essentially looking at my playing underneath a microscope. I quickly figured out that I had the touch of a blacksmith in my left hand, in my fretting hand. And it was something that I had to start working on because it was so bad in some cases that I couldn't record. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, let me show you. I'm just gonna play an E chord. The guitar is in tune. And you can hear, if you listen to this G sharp, the harder I press down, the more out of tune this note gets. I'm not bending the note at all, I'm just pressing down harder on the fretboard. The same thing can happen with single notes. So that's something to work on. You don't need as much grip force as you might think to get a note to ring out clearly. And in fact, the lighter the touch you have, oftentimes the better you'll sound. Okay, so if anyone has ever played a Les Paul style guitar or any Gibson style guitar or any Gibson, you've probably run into specifically the G string not ever wanting to stay in tune. It's notorious. It's notorious. <laughs> it's just something that I've come to accept with all my Gibsons. Why is that? What's, what's going on there? So tuning issues almost always come down to the nut. Almost always. So when we're talking about the specific thing with Gibson, it comes down to the string angles uh, and what's happening there. So just a, as a note, when you get like locking tuning keys, that's not helping your guitar stay in tune any better. Okay, if the strings wound properly, it's not gonna have any impact. It makes changing the strings way quicker. Um, tuning really comes down to the nut. That's really it. That's one of the places where the string touches. So yeah, let's look at Gibson. And let's, uh, let's look at something like this as well. It's kind of a Fender style headstock. Interestingly, made in the old Gibson factory it is. It in Kalamazoo. <laughs> unintentional irony there. <laughs> so on a traditional Fender style guitar, if you notice the strings pull straight through the nut slots. It's not really any any angle. They don't splay off at all, right? Now look at this. You can see they splay pretty hard. Different angles, right? The angle is what's causing your binding, right? on a Les Paul style guitar. So you probably, I mean, right, you've been playing a long time. You got seen the guys with the pencil? Yep. Doing that, and then we got the nut sauce, like the Big Ben's nut sauce, lubricants. Yep. Got guys like sanding away, like scraping it, putting graphite and brass, and like, <laughs> like why well, won't it stay in tune? 
Well, the reason it won't stay in tune is because that slot really has to be cut properly. And it's a challenge to get it just right. When we cut nut slots, we cut that angle into the slot, right? So we don't just go straight through like this. Actually, even on this guitar, which is a pretty affordable guitar, you can see that the slots are actually angled. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That speaks a lot to a $1,500 guitar having that. See that slot? Yep. Straight through. Yep. So we would actually cut that at a display here. Um, I'm sure that the reason for that is that's probably exactly how they did it in 1958, 1960. I'm sure that's how they did it. If you get the nut slots cut, cut properly and the string can travel through without binding, it will stay in much, much better tune. To fix it, if you're having the G string, the dreaded G string tuning slips, make sure your guitar is set up properly, but also know that that's, that's where it's coming from. It's in the nut, so you gotta get that adjusted out, and it's a, a combination of getting the angle correct of the slot, where the witness point is right there, because that's gonna have an impact on your intonation. I want that string to touch on the end there and go through. So getting the angle right, getting the width right, and making sure there's no burrs or anything to catch it up. And bone works great. There's no reason not to use bone. Graphite works great. If you want to use, this is nylon, uh, which again is just a period correct thing. So there are plenty of options as long as it's cut right. right you won't have tuning issues. That's why on most of my guitars, if they don't come with the bone nuts whenever I buy them, that's generally one of the first things I do is have the nylon nut or graph tech or anything like that replaced with a bone nut. Uh, and on a Gibson style headstock, a three and three, where you have those angles, that gives you the chance to re-angle those nut slots if needed. So if I bought that guitar, that's the first thing I would do. Swap the nylon, which is period correct, right? Which is yeah. why they did that. But I'd probably put a bone nut on there and have the nut slots angled. <laughs> so what about guitars with tremolos on them? Yeah, um, so let's just play like this is gonna, we're gonna take three different types of trims. Like we'll take the, the Strat style trim, like right. the, the synchronized trim. We'll take a Floyd Rose style trim and then a Bigsby. Let's just go with the Bigsby. We'll leave out like the Maestro and some of those things. But starting with the Bigsby, any point of contact is a potential problem <laughs> for your tuning when you got moving parts, right? So if you notice, you've got this, which spins, right? And you get your saddles. In this particular guitar, they put roller saddles. Those are little wheels that spin, which I can't get underneath it, but that's okay. They spin. So they're really doing everything they can to reduce friction there. Sometimes it won't return to the right place. You might have a faulty spring. You know, you can get these springs replaced in different tensions. But usually, it's something to do in this area that's not returning that might be causing your issues. And it should be said that most people with Bigsby's aren't dive bombing. Mm -hmm. It's a subtle, it's a out of tune, but a little subtle thing. Very old design, right? It just, just doesn't stay in tune as well. It can, but it takes a lot more work. Uh, next we'll go to the, uh, we might as well jump to the, to this, this guy, right? <laughs> You've played this guitar before. I have. <laughs> you loved it. It was great. Yeah, you were I'm surprised surprise. it's still here. Well, you know, I'll make you a deal on it. So this is a Floyd Rose style tremolo and a Floyd Rose style guitar totally a look Floyd at Rose it style guitar, yeah uh, so it locks at the nut what's really smart about that is now that is no longer a, a friction point right and it locks right here each string has its own lock there's a bunch of versions of these Kalers and Floyd Rose type of locking tremolos what's cool about that is now there's no way for it to slip there either so the only real thing that can cause this guitar to have tuning issues is the string stretching, which will happen at the beginning, and also these two points that the tremolo floats on. As long as the knife edge on the tremolo is good and the bearing that's cut into that is good and smooth, it should always return back to where it's supposed to be. You can destroy, I mean, you can just go crazy on these guitars and all the, you know, get your strings doing that. Right. That's the most on-brand Floyd Rose guitar I think I've ever seen. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. <laughs> All right, and then uh, the last one. Good old Strat, right? This is an old vintage synchronized trim system. It does share some things with a Floyd Rose, and mainly that it's pivoting on these six screws. You may see a system with two screws. You may see a system with four screws. There's a few different types, but all of them are pivoting on those screws. What this doesn't have are the locks for each saddle. It doesn't have the locks 
for each nut. But, like the Floyd Rose, these need to be set appropriately or the guitar will not stay in tune. So, got to have that set up right. PRS is another brand that has their version of this. And each screw head actually has a bevel cut into it. Perfect for the knife edge on the tremolo. That's why they stay in tune so well. It's a really balanced system. So this is held like the Floyd Rose. Underneath this plate, there are springs that are countering the tension of the strings. So those springs pull the bridge back down against the tension of the springs. To get this thing set up, you have to decide, are you gonna do a hardtail? A lot of people like to lock it down the body. You're one of those people, right? Yep. So if you see the bridge is locked on the body, that means I can tighten those springs up. And when I bend, I won't get this. You hear that, that note lowers when I bend this string. That won't happen if you lock it down hardtail. So that can help with your tuning stability. Uh, some people think it sounds better too. That's totally subjective. Uh, but if you get it balanced right, like I'm, I'm, I think we've talked about this, my strats are all floating. Because mm -hmm. I like to do a little, you know. But if you get it balanced right, it'll be, it'll be rocking and rolling. It's really all about the balance of the, the tremolo, the springs, and of course making sure your, the rest of the guitar is set properly. One last thing to note on everything that we've talked about too, is that if you change your string gauge, the size of your string, everything changes. So if I put a lighter gauge string on this, there's not gonna be as much tension. This is no longer gonna balance the same way. It'll need to be adjusted. If I put a lighter, heavier gauge string on this, the tension on the neck's not the same. So like when we talked about relief, it's gonna move. I'm gonna have to adjust that, right? The action will probably change a little bit as well. And if I go up substantially, my nut slots might even have to be resized just to fit the strings. So when you go into the shop and you see a guitar that's set up like that, it's real simple. They probably took an American Fender Stratocaster with nines on it and they put tens on it, but they didn't adjust anything. That's not okay. Most people don't want their guitar to be like that. Like that? Sure. So those are some common guitar tuning issues and a couple ways to fix them or go about fixing them yourself. Huge thanks to Ben and the guys here at Righteous Guitars. If you're ever in the Alpharetta, Georgia area, I highly recommend coming to check this place out because, I mean, look at it. If you want more information, Ben actually wrote a blog post about this very subject. I'll have linked in the description box down below. Cool thing is you can actually leave a comment on that blog post, a question if you've got it, and Ben will actually answer you directly. So check that out if you want more information. You can follow Righteous Guitars on Instagram and you can follow me on Instagram at Rhett Scholl. Don't forget to subscribe down here on this channel if you haven't done so already. Hope you enjoyed today's video. My name is Rhett Scholl. Thank you guys so much for watching and remember there is no plan B.